let's have a quick recap of what we covered so far. We defined what object detection is, and we defined how to one way of measuring the performance of different object detection systems. Then we introduce an algorithm. And in that algorithm, we had multiple steps. We had uh, an algorithm which had nothing to do with deep learning. It was selective search that was giving us proposals, proposing regions to us. Then we had to take that region, warp it, push it through a neural network, get the features, and then give the features to a a bunch of classifiers and in that particular case they were support vector machines to be able to classify what is the object inside this box inside this proposed box then in the next paper we saw that warping images is not necessary if you change your backbone slightly and uh, try to share parameters you don't need to warp and at the same time you can share a lot of computations and therefore you can save a lot of computations and make things faster rather than taking a box, cropping it and warping it and pushing through, pushing that image those, for those regions multiple times through a convolution, you can actually share most of the computations. And the way that you do it is with the spatial pyramid pooling. And then the next paper came along and said, you don't even need these support vector machines. You can have it end to end by having multiple heads coming out of uh, out for your predictions for one head is doing the classification one head is doing the bounding box regression and then you can have a multitask loss and try to optimize that so this is what we covered so far and uh, after doing that things have started to get much faster things were getting much faster it was possible to put these systems and apply them in real time for videos I think it was uh, for videos, it could be 60 frames per second. So things has to be really fast. Uh, but then something was still a bottleneck in terms of computations. We needed to share some more computations. And that is these regions, the region proposal algorithm. For the region proposals, we were using selective search. This next paper came along and said, you can actually have a neural network proposing to you what regions to use. And that's going to be a region proposal network. And we are going to use the shorthand acronym for it, RPN. But what is it? It's a fully convolutional neural network. And it's going to predict bounding boxes. It's going to give you object bounds. And it's going to tell you, is there an object within this box or no? So it's exactly what selective search was doing. So not only is it going to give us the boxes, it's going to give us an objectness score as well. And what we are going to do, is try to share as many parameters as possible between the region proposal network and fast RCNN, because in the end, we want to have a fast system. We want to share computations when it comes to inference. Training might be a little bit more complicated, but once these networks are trained in inference, you're gonna be really fast. So, and the way that we are gonna train them is an alternating optimization scheme. And I'm going to tell you precisely what that is later on. But this is the big picture of what we are anticipating. So let's say you take an image, you push it through your convolutions, and you end up with a convolutional feature map. So that's going to be a tensor. It's going to have a height and a width and a bunch of channels. Let's say you're going to have 20, 256 channels. And it's going to have a resolution. Let's say H times W. What we're gonna do is put a sliding window on that convolutional feature map. And then each window is gonna correspond to multiple boxes. And these are gonna be anchor boxes of different sizes and different aspect ratios. So each point here on the feature map is gonna correspond to perhaps nine boxes on the original image. And then as you keep sliding that uh, window, you're going to end up with a lot of boxes. These are your anchors. And now you want to adjust these anchors. If you want to adjust the anchors, you want to know how much I need to shift the left side to the left or to the right. How much should I adjust the top boundary, etc. And that's why you're going to have a regressor network. And that's exactly what we had before. It's very similar to what we had before. And then it's going to predict four coordinates for these boxes for adjustments to these boxes. 
and then you're going to have k of those because you have k anchors and at the same time you have k anchors and you want to know in this box that i'm drawing is there an object or no that's why you have two here is it an object or no so you only have two classes there is either an object or there is no object the cool thing is that these operations you can implement them using convolutions this is just a three by three convolution and the other ones you can implement them as one by one convolutions and we know that convolutions are really efficient they are going to share a lot of computations and you can take this feature map push it through a bunch of convolutions and get your scores and coordinates so what are these anchors you're going to have nine anchors and they are going to have three different scales and these scales are relative to the size of the image that's going in and you're going to have three different aspect ratios maybe you have a ratio of one and one maybe you have a ratio of two and one or you have a ratio of one and two and you have boxes of different sizes this is one size this is another size etc and you're gonna have nine of them you're gonna have nine per each of uh, these points per each pixel per each pixel in your feature map and how many are there if the width and the height of the feature map you denote them by w and h per each point per each pixel you're gonna have k anchor boxes and that's going to give you the total of your anchor boxes w times h times k so you're going to have that many anchor boxes that then you're going to adjust according to your regressor so what is the loss function for this region proposal network you are going to have a classification loss according to these scores is there a box or no box and then you're going to have a classification loss i is denoting uh, your anchor boxes in your mini batch of data so let's say there are 10 uh, images in your batch and per each image you're going to have this many anchor boxes so the summation is over i your anchor boxes and per each anchor box there is either an object in there or there is no object in there that's going to give you a classification loss and then you're going to have a regression loss per each anchor but then you're only going to include the ones that have an object inside them. So PI star is either a zero or a one. It's an indicator. If it's one, there is an object in this box. If it's zero, there is no object. And if there is no object in this box, there is no reason to include it in your regression. And N is the number of boxes that you're taking into account in your mini batch. So as I said, I is the index of an anchor in a mini batch. PI is the predicted probability coming out of your neural network. PI star is an indicator. Anchor is positive. It means that there is an object inside the anchor. Anchor is negative. It means that there is no object in there. But how do you come up with the data for it? You're going to look at the intersection over union of your ground truth. All of the anchors that have an intersection over union with a ground truth bond bounding box, and that intersection over union is the highest, is going to be a positive anchor, regardless of how big that IOU was. Any anchor with an IOU overlap with a ground truth box of bigger than 0.7 is going to be a positive one. If an anchor has an IOU lower than 0.3 with all of the ground truth, that's going to be a negative. So you have positive cases, you have negative cases, therefore you can train it. So there is a question from Jacob. Does this mean that we should pass the image so that each pixel so that at each pixel we have the same set of anchor boxes centered on all of the relevant pixels or would we just truncate the anchor boxes for edge pixels so the question is what happens when this dot is around the boundary uh, what are you gonna do then there is gonna be anchor box and some part of that box is going to be outside of your image. So you're just going to set that to zero. Whenever you don't have any data, that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero padding. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. And what are the scales? That was a very timely question. What are the scales corresponding to your anchor boxes? These are the scales. 128 by 128, 256 by 256, and 512 by 512 pixels. These are the different sizes. And as for the aspect ratios, you're going to have 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 1. 
similar to what you have here. This is one, one, this is one, two, and this is two, one. Any questions so far? Before I go to the training step, how do we actually train this network? I have a quick question. Yes. If, uh, if we have these three set scales and these three set aspect ratios, um, does that mean K is nine? Like we have those combinations? Exactly, yes. So K can't be, K is like fixed at nine always. You have oh, nine I see. anchors. Okay. You have nine anchors per each pixel in your feature map. And that's gonna give you a total of W times H times K uh, total anchors per each image. Is there a reason they leave, I mean, it seems weird to leave K like general like this if it's gonna be fixed. Like, do they look at like more scales and more aspect ratios? Yes, definitely. So you can play around with K. Okay. So that could be a hyperparameter that you can play around. Maybe you want to include four scales. Okay. Maybe you want to include more aspect ratios. But the more of these you include, the more costly your algorithm is going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, there is a trade-off. It's going to give you more accurate predictions probably, but it's going to be more costly. So how do we train this alongside our fast RCNN? It's going to be a multi-step training process because in the end, we want to share parameters between the region proposal network and fast RCNN. First of all, you're going to initialize your region proposal network with an ImageNet pre-trained model. So that's gonna be transfer learning. You are transferring your learnings from ImageNet to RPN. And then you're gonna fine tune end to end the region proposal task. So you're gonna use this loss function to train your region proposal network. Now you don't need selective search anymore. That's gonna be your region proposal algorithm. Perfect. It means that you can go to the second step and use the regions proposed by the region proposal network to train your fast RCNN because we know that fast RCNN depended on region proposals. And the way that you're gonna initialize fast RCNN is using ImageNet. So you're doing two transfer learnings here from ImageNet to RPN and from ImageNet to fast RCNN. But now these are two separate networks because they are trained differently according to different losses. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna use this detector network, fast RCNN, and you're gonna use the weights and biases of this network to initialize your RPN network. So now you're doing a transfer learning from fast RCNN to RPN. But what you're gonna do is you fix the shared convolutional layers and you're only fine tuning the head. So you're only fine tuning this part of the network. Okay, now you have your RPN. You're gonna use your RPN to keep proposing regions for your fast RCNN, but then you're gonna keep the shared convolutional layers, and then you're gonna fine tune the fully the head of your fast RCNN. Now, what you just did is you are sharing the convolutional layers. And the only thing that's not shared and is task specific is uh, the head of these two networks. And that's it. You have two networks. They're sharing most of their operations. One of them is proposing regions for the other one to use. And this is exactly what's gonna happen in your inference. And that's why it's much faster. And here are some qualitative examples of identifying persons, boats, person in a bus, and cat, dog, etc. So now everything is deep learning now. There is no reason to use support vector machines. There was no reason to use selective search. So is this clear? Sorry if I missed this. What's the architecture of the RPN? What type of network is it? Uh, that doesn't really matter because what matters here is the is what is important for creating a region proposal network. So it doesn't matter what happens before the convolution of feature maps. Oh, I see. So you just pick any, pick your favorite network to get the features and then add those few layers on top of it. Exactly. But whatever that's happening before you get your convolution of feature map is shared between region proposal network and fast RCN. Cool. The rest of it could be any network that you trained on ImageNet. It could be a ResNet, it could be different architectures. Any other questions? So this is a massive project and that's a tough problem to solve. And you see there was a lot of uh, moving pieces into the puzzle. 